This is an old-fashioned roll-top desk, but not any ordinary desk. This desk has a powerful purpose, a perspective new life. I have redesigned this piece of furniture to suit the strict needs of the lady of the house. This desk is already quite an elaborate desk, as a lot of them were during this era. And by era, I mean the... the 70s. Yeah, I'll admit, this isn't an ancient antique from a 19th century Victorian mansion as much as I'd like to tell you that. And I'll prove it. I highly doubt the master carpenters would have let this beauty of a butt joint slide, or this drawer face that's set a quarter inch lower than the others and they definitely didn't have particle board during their time. The design improvements will solve some of these issues as well as create alternate uses for the desk altogether. The final color is rather dark, so for a better visual, here is a light version. I plan on raising the desk six inches for standing height. A lower leg and apron assembly will replace the toe kick. A center door will be added for concealed storage space with adjustable shelves. The wooden poles will be replaced with unique brass knobs, and the whole unit will be color toned to a very dark and moody brown. This will serve as a packaging station for Bridget when she is fulfilling orders for her business. The first step is to pull this thing apart. The inner drawer unit can slide out and I'll set it aside. I remember to mark each drawer with a number so I return them to the correct locations later. Now I can unscrew one upright and move it to the side. This gives me some room to carefully pull the roll top out. This though is where I make my first mistake. I used too much force and blow the frame apart. Did they like use no glue when they put this thing together? Yeah, it's their fault. I guess I'll fix this later and move on. I continue to disassemble all of the different components. Taking advantage of a last moment before the end of my day, I glue up the broken upright panel and get it back in working order. The next day I can start the first process of personalizing the desk. Cutting off the first 4 inches of the cabinets will offer more room for taller legs and a cleaner look. The bottom of the larger cabinet needs to be reset a bit higher to be even with the other side. So I use pocket hole screws for this, then finish cutting the sides off. Now the door, which is four faux drawer faces, doesn't fit in its place so I'll cut off the excess with my track saw. The handles are removed and the back side can be cleaned of its random cork, brad nails, and double-sided tape mess. There are also some random blocks on the inside of one cabinet, and shelf pinholes can also be drilled. I can begin the base panel that will hold the weight of the cabinets. The panel is three-quarter plywood veneered with red oak and framed with an outer edge of solid oak. The outside corners are mitered, then the whole thing is dominoed together. Next to be made is the middle frame and panel door. The side profiles are first routed, subsequently the coped tenons can be cut. Then the door can be glued together with a plywood floating panel. I also make this back panel off camera. This will fill in the central back side of the desk. Central back side? Anyways, for some of the next components, I print out one-to-one -one templates directly from SketchUp. 
The leg template is glued to a piece of MDF. Not every template though, and you'll see why. I can cut the MDF template on the bandsaw and refine the curves with a file and sandpaper. I mark four legs on a board of eight quarter red oak and rough cut them wide of the lines on the bandsaw. Using a template bit in the router table, I can cut my first cleanup pass, followed by a second pass after pulling the template. I cut all four legs this way before switching the bit to a flush trim bit and finalizing the shape. The table saw and band saw are much safer at cutting the end grain than the router table. Now the aprons can be made. For the unique back apron and two sides, I just trace the paper templates to save time. But for the important front apron, I glue the template directly to the red oak board. They all get cut to shape, then sanded to the lines. Now everything can get final sanded to 220 grit in preparation for staining. The door can be trimmed for a perfect fit, and the base panel can get its bullnose profile to match the desktop. Before I go through all of the tedious work of staining and finishing every single piece, I think it's necessary to do a pre-assembly. For this, I simply use screws because they are easy and reversible. While doing a pre-assembly, I am paying attention to how square things go together and if any problems arise, which I'm glad I do this because I realize that I haven't cut the legs into the base panel. So with a block of the same thickness as the legs, I mark where to cut and use a Japanese saw to do the honors. A multi-tool is perfect for the flush cut and a chisel works well to clean up my mess. Each leg can successively get cut into place and screwed on. With all four legs installed, the aprons can be tailored to fit nice and tight. Pocket hole screws are obviously my go-to on this project. I might as well check to see if the middle door fits while I'm at it. And it does. Nicely done. A few last extras include edge banding the front of each shelf, cutting a finger pull into the bottom side of the larger pull-out tray, which is done with a track saw, a chisel, and some sandpaper, then marking where each component goes, scuff sanding the existing finish for better adhesion, cleaning the rest of the aged grime, covering hardware in plastic, repositioning the misplaced drawer face, and finally sanding the areas that have the handle marks. The first step for staining is making sure all of the new lighter toned components match the existing orangish brown of the aged desk. There's actually an important reason why I have to do this first step. You may think the dark brown tone that I spray over everything would cover up any differences in color, but with transtint, it's so transparent, the color underneath actually plays a large role in what final color is represented. So having an even undertone is going to be important here. To produce the dark brown, I'm going to use the rest of my MTech products that I have for my conversion varnish video. Black transtint along with the existing golden brown undertone of the desk will together produce a rich deep brown. I spray numerous extremely light coats to gradually sneak up on the depth of color that I want. This process takes a very, very long time, like days. 
Then I can spray two finish coats of a clear varnish, since the toner doesn't really have any durability of its own. The new brass handles have arrived, so I can actually alter the existing brass to match the patina of the new handles. This antiquing process is very simple. I just scuff the brass, then spray it lightly with black spray paint and dab with a paper towel. Super easy, super simple. I can pre-assemble the base and bring it into Bridget's office where it will serve as the packaging station. Here I can install everything in place. I think you get the idea. And as always, it's time for final shots. <laughs>